Supergiant's indie darling Hades took the world by storm upon its full release in September 2020. So much praise was poured in the game that it was put in contention for Game of the Year against AAA industry juggernauts that typically hold the nominations for the award. Particular praise was showered on the narrative of the game, which took inspiration from Greek mythology and centers on Zagreus, the prince of the underworld, as he attempts to complete the impossible task of escaping from the domain of his father, Hades, to reunite with his mother, who has fled from the underworld to the surface. It's through his various escape attempts, the successes and the failures, as well as the conversations he has with those he meets along the way, that he learns the background and history of his family while also working towards reconciling it. Given that the story is told through multiple playthroughs, that the background of everything is told while it progresses, and the fact that there is more of the story to see after the credits roll means most players aren't going to see the story of Hades in its entirety. So let's compile everything together and present it here so that we can see the full story. Obviously, spoilers for the game are ahead, so now is the time for you to click away if you haven't played through the game, and want to experience the story on your own, which I definitely recommend. But if you're still here and ready, let's get started. Zagreus, the prince of the underworld, was the son of Hades, the god of the underworld, and Nyx, knight incarnate. Being the presumptive heir to the vast, expansive realm of his father, he received lessons in what it took to keep the various systems of the underworld running smoothly but he was never really good at it, much to his father's annoyance. In fact, their relationship was pretty strained due to Hades' belief that Zagreus was lazy and lacked ambition. Hoping to wake something up inside of his son, Hades charged the Shade of Achilles, one of Greece's most renowned heroes, with training his son in the martial ways, something Zagreus immediately excelled at. Yet still, Hades believed him to be foolish, reckless, and irresponsible. As such, Zagreus never quite felt at home in the house of Hades, and the rumors surrounding his parentage didn't help matters either. Rumors that centered on his piercing green eye that wasn't shared by anyone else in his family, or the fact that he bled red, just like a mortal did, implying there was mortal blood in his veins. Hades never entertained any questions Zagreus had on the topic, so the prince took matters into his own hands. He convinced Hypnos to put a spell over the house to put everyone to sleep, and then Zagreus snuck to his father's desk in the Great Hall, where he hoped to find something that hinted at who he was. As he searched through the other administrative items scattered on the desktop, he came across a farewell note to his father left by a woman named Persephone, and through what some would call chance and others divine intervention, Zagreus learned that Persephone was his real mother. When he saw Nyx almost immediately after, she confirmed the truth. He was not her son, but the son of Persephone, who had left the underworld to live on the surface. Zagreus had so many questions burning in his head now, but due to a vow that she had made to Hades, Nyx couldn't give him any more information, so Zagreus decided he was going to find his mother. Having made no vow herself, he was sure she would answer all of his questions. The only problem with that was he would need to escape from the realm of his father to reach the surface where his mother resided. And according to Hades, no one was allowed to leave his domain, not even the prince. So Zagreus was going to have to fight his way out. His path would take him through various regions of the underworld, places like Tartarus, Asphodel, Elysium, and the Temple of Styx. His early attempts didn't end up going too well, as the shades that made up the realms, as well as the various defense mechanisms his father had set up, did well in stopping his advance through the underworld. Although annoyed at the destruction Zagreus caused, Hades entertained his son's foolish notions of escape, convinced he would give up after a few deaths. However, showing a determination that Hades didn't know was in his son, Zagreus refused to give up and continued his escape attempts. While his father tried to stop him, there were others that supported his escape attempts. Knowing Zagreus would need assistance, Nyx reached out to the Olympians, informing the gods that they had a family member in the depths of Hades that wanted to escape and come live with them on Mount Olympus, hiding the truth of Zagreus' journey for a reason she wouldn't reveal to the prince. When the Olympians heard of his quest, 
they offered boons of their power to Zagreus, strengthening him and giving him a little extra push to complete his escape. But these power-ups were only temporary, expiring when Zagreus died and re-emerged in the Pool of Sticks in the House of Hades. And they alone weren't enough to get him through the underworld. Again, Nyx came to his aid. She gave Zagreus a mirror where he could use solidified darkness he'd collected in the underworld to improve various aspects of his being. And unlike the boons offered by the Olympians, these darkness upgrades were permanent. Thus, each time he was defeated, Zagreus came back a little stronger, thanks to the power of darkness, and wiser, thanks to his gained experience in traversing the dangers of the underworld and battling their denizens. And eventually, he fought through the Furies that guarded the exit of Tartarus, destroyed the Bone Hydra that lied in the lava pools of Asphodel, defeated the hero Theseus and the mighty Minotaur in a one-on-two -on -two fight in Elysium, and bribed his way past his loyal canine companion Cerberus in the Temple of Styx to finally reach the surface. But there was still one more trial he had to overcome. Waiting for him there in the cold winter night was Hades, his father, who had personally come to stop his son from escaping. However, Zagreus wouldn't be stopped, not by anybody. And so, whether it was the first time they battled or the 40th, eventually, Zagreus was able to do the impossible and defeat the god of the underworld, sending him back to his house through the pool of sticks. With this final obstacle conquered, Zagreus finally set out to find his mother. He walked through the night, watched the sun rise for the first time over the domain of his uncle, then found a green garden standing as an island against the harsh winter. Here, standing outside a quaint cottage, Zagreus found his mother. While he was immensely happy to have found her, the joy Persephone felt when she saw her son was indescribable as she believed he died in childbirth. The fact that he was standing before her alive and well was a miracle. The two spent some time together where Zagreus told her of what led him here, but before he could get the answers he so desperately wanted from her, the reunion was cut short as Zagreus suddenly weakened, then died. Being inextricably linked to the underworld, he couldn't be outside of that realm for long before the fates ushered him back to his home. Just before he left, he promised his mother he would return to her soon. He was under the assumption that his father would allow him to go freely to her now that he had escaped and defeated him in battle. Yet Hades, perhaps having his pride hurt by being bested by his lazy, unambitious, good-for-nothing son, completely ignored what transpired between the two of them on the surface and still refused to let Zagreus freely leave his domain. Despite his father's continued resistance, Zagreus fought his way through the underworld several more times, and it was through these repeated escape attempts and visits with his mother that Zagreus learned of his past and the past of his parents. It all started with Persephone. Born to Demeter, the goddess of seasons, and an ordinary mortal man, she was called Kore by her mother as she lived on Mount Olympus amongst the other gods of the Greek pantheon. But she was deeply unhappy there due to the attitudes of the other gods and her mother's treatment of her. Her unhappiness was known to Zeus, who devised a plan to help Persephone, but also in a way to help himself. Since he and his brothers had adopted their respective domains, Zeus always felt guilty that he got the sprawling heavens and Poseidon gained the vast seas, while Hades was stuck with the never-ending administrative work of the deep, dark underworld. He decided the best way to make it up to his brother and overcome his guilt, while also helping Persephone get out of her miserable surroundings, was to pay a surprise visit to the underworld with Persephone in tow to give her over to his brother, whom he knew had a bit of a crush on Persephone, to be his new queen, thereby killing two birds with one stone. However, Zeus didn't consider what his impulsive actions would do. He didn't exactly let any of the Olympians know what he was doing with Persephone, so when she disappeared from Olympus, there was panic. Demeter, Persephone's mother, took her disappearance particularly hard and left Olympus to search for her. 
Realizing Demeter would make hell freeze over should she find her with Hades in the underworld, which would eventually cause a war to erupt between the Chthonic gods and the Olympians as the various members of each side rushed to aid their families, Zeus spread a rumor that a mortal had absconded with Persephone, or that she had run off with one. Filled with rage at their supposed blasphemy, Demeter has since made mortals perish, plunging their world in a deep chill that freezes it, making harvest and cultivation impossible and life difficult. It wasn't just the Olympians upset at Zeus's reckless behavior. Hades was upset at being put in the position he was in and thereby cut off all contact with his brother and Olympus as a whole, isolating the Chthonic gods from their kin above. But Persephone wasn't returned to the mountain. She took a fancy to the god of the underworld herself, and soon after her arrival, the two were wed. Although she had a feeling that she didn't quite belong, Persephone embraced her new role as the queen of the underworld. It was only a short time later that she became pregnant, and the house of Hades prepared itself for the impending arrival of Zagreus, a new prince. However, there was a problem. When Hades took over the underworld, the fates, the beings responsible for determining the destiny of various aspects of the universe, foretold that Hades would never have an heir since he was not originally from the underworld. This prophecy came to fruition when the child of Hades and Persephone was stillborn upon birth. The grief of the loss of her child was too much for Persephone, compounded by that feeling that she didn't belong in the underworld. And so, she left, leaving the farewell note to her husband before her departure. She didn't return to Olympus, not comfortable with the prospect of returning to the mountain, so instead turned to the Earth, the home of her mortal father, as the location of her new home. However, unbeknownst to Persephone, Nyx had intervened. She poured a ton of her power into the infant Zagreus, defying the prophecy of her daughters, the fates, and bringing him back to life. This fantastic news should have been shared with Persephone, so she could come back to her family. But Hades thought it better to keep the secret from her. The main reason being that if any of the Olympians, especially Demeter, found her on the surface of the earth, it would avoid the catastrophic war that he believed would inevitably arise should she be found in the underworld. As such, he swore Nyx to secrecy as well, ordering her to use her power to conceal Persephone's exact location and to conceal the truth of Zagreus's true parentage from him his entire life, he should be raised believing that she was his mother. To ensure there would never be a slip from any of the others in the house, any reference, portrait, or otherwise of Persephone was completely removed, and even the utterance of her name in its halls carried with it a severe punishment. And so it was that Zagreus grew up in the underworld without any knowledge of his mother, who, likewise, never knew her baby boy had survived and was living in her husband's house. Both protected by Hades, who lived in fear of a war that could tear the world apart should the truth of their stories be discovered. Learning the truth of it all, how complicated everything was, Zagreus should have taken the stance that his father, and even his mother, took, that this was the way things should be. It would be too risky to imagine otherwise. But Zagreus wasn't willing to accept the status quo. He was a rebel, and he was set on fixing this and repairing the family. He had to start with his mother and father, as they were central to the entire thing. Not only his own happiness, but to the reparations of relations with the Olympians and the family as a whole. He begged his mother to come back with him to the underworld, but she was hesitant to return, given the risk. And, since so much time had passed, she was sure Hades no longer loved her. Zagreus thought that ridiculous, that Hades trying to protect her to this day, even from her own son, was evidence enough to indicate that he still loved her. But that wasn't enough. He would need more. So upon his next return to the house, Zagreus persuaded Achilles to let him into his father's room 
sure he could find something that showed Hades still loved Persephone. He found it at Hades' bedside, a beautiful portrait of Persephone that had never left the nightstand it rested on in all the years since her departure. Zagreus rushed off to inform his mother, yet by the time he succumbed to the power of the surface, she was still skeptical of returning, not entirely sure going back would be a good idea. Zagreus was determined to convince her no matter how long it took and made another trek up to see her. On this journey, when he met his father on the surface outside the Temple of Styx, Hades finally freely let him go to Persephone, worn down by the fierce determination from his unambitious son. And he wasn't the only one Zagreus' attitude had affected. When Zagreus came upon his mother, he found that she was all packed up, ready to go with him to the underworld, ready to return to her husband. Her mind changed by Zagreus' insistence. Charon met them there on the surface and ferried them back through the various realms of the underworld on the River Styx, where they met Hades in the garden before the Great House. In a reckoning that was a long time coming, Hades apologized to Persephone for hiding the truth from her and to Zagreus for treating him so harshly his whole life, which both accepted, ready to put everything behind them now that Persephone had returned. And so, the family of the underworld was finally reunited and together in happiness, much to the joy of all those that called the domain home. However, there was still the matter of the Olympians to settle. In the aftermath of the reunion, Hades had asked Zagreus to continue trying to escape from the underworld as it would allow for improved security of the realm, as well as keep up the illusion that he was trying to escape to Mount Olympus to the gods that resided there. The family needed time to figure out a way to settle matters with them, something Persephone wanted to handle, and after some time, she came up with a plan. First, Zagreus was going to have to get close with the Olympians raising his affinity with most of the ones that had been helping him, specifically at least six of the nine, to the highest it could be by giving them nectar, completing their favor, and gifting them ambrosia, outside of Demeter who only needed to be gifted nectar. After that, Persephone had her son personally deliver invitations to the Olympians to a feast they would be hosting in the underworld. She had decided that honesty, well, Mostly, honesty was really the best policy of explaining everything to them and getting them on board. Trusting in his mother, Zagreus did as he asked, delivering the invitations, and despite the annoyance Hades felt about accommodating his family in his house, everyone prepared for the impending family reunion. When all the gods were gathered together, Persephone, who was long thought lost to the Olympians, revealed herself to everyone and fed them a concocted story of half-truths to explain her absence and the actions of her son. At its conclusion, Zeus, who knew part of the truth, broke the tension by laughing aloud and welcoming them back to the family, thus ending the prospect of war that had always hung over the heads of everyone that knew the truth. Just as the night ended, Hades and Zeus grasped each other's hands, a symbol of the restored strength of the family. Yet, Zagreus couldn't help but feel dishonest about the story given to the Olympians. Whether it was called half-truths or just straight-up lies, it made him feel wrong. But Persephone was able to put his feelings at ease by explaining the real purpose of the entire thing. It wasn't so much to give them a factual explanation as it was to extend an olive branch to the family to agree to move on from the past despite the mistakes that had been made and the pain they may have caused. It was about being honest with their actions rather than their words. And it worked. Now, Hades and Persephone's relationship could be out in the open. Zagreus' parentage no longer had to remain a secret. And the family as a whole was reunited, with everyone being stronger and happier together. After all, they were stuck with each other, so why not make things as good as they can be? With the lesson setting his heart at rest, Zagreus set off to test the defenses of the underworld once more, bringing the magnificent story of Hades to an end. You know, I was actually surprised how similar it was to the actual Greek legend of the abduction of Persephone. 
I've only read a Wikipedia article on it, but it carries many of the same major beats. Zeus allowing Hades and Persephone to be together, Demeter being upset at her daughter's disappearance, and even pomegranate seeds are mentioned as a reason Persephone stays in the underworld in both stories. If anything, I think it's a testament to how talented and superb the team at Supergiant Games is. They were able to take that legend, make it their own, and make it accessible to so many people that wouldn't have heard the story otherwise. And the fact that it's not only the superb gameplay of the game that keeps pulling us back to play through it multiple times, but the telling of the story too is incredibly commendable. It's not just the main story that gets told this way either. There are many other side quests and other characters that have stories of their own that I didn't get to talk about here, so I definitely recommend playing the game to see how those stories unfold. Plus, the game does a better job of telling its story than I ever could. Everything together, the characters, the gameplay, the design, the music, it all creates a great, unforgettable package that deserves every ounce of praise it got. And Hades definitely deserves a place on a figurative video game Mount Olympus where the upper echelons of the video game pantheon reside. But that'll be it for this one. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll do my best to answer them. Until next time, thank you for watching and see you later. It wasn't so much as to give them an honest explanation as it was to an ex as it was to extend, not an extend. You don't an extend anything, you stupid head. It wasn't so much to give them an honest explanation as it was to an ex I did it again. It wasn't so much to give them an honest explanation as it was to an ugh, fuck. <laughs>